How you doing, folks? Um, what I'm going to talk to you today about is a uh, movie, uh, one of my f favorite live-action uh, movies um, that uh, came from Japan, which is called Ran. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this, of course, is a period piece. Um, it, uh, well, maybe not, of course. I guess it could really be updated. But it, it follows a story very similar to King Lear, if you're familiar with that. Now, I'm not, I, at first, I'm not, I, I'll break down the story in a moment, but first, let me get this across. Um, it is, it has some great uh, dialogue, scene transitions, and is overall a very beautiful film, in my opinion. Um, unlike, if you're trying to get the general King Lear feel, in my opinion, it's almost easier with this movie. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I had to do a report on King Lear, I, I, it was, I couldn't get through the Shakespeare initially. So what did I do? I ended up running this movie. And it was so much easier to understand what they were trying to say. Now, are they saying different things? Are there plot changes? Of course. But if you're trying to get the overall mood and feel of what I think they were trying to do with King Lear, um, this is not a bad place to start. It, it's actually easier with the subtitles than with... Uh, trying to break into Shakespeare's language. Though it's Shakespeare, of course, I don't want to diminish him. He has some of the best writing you'll ever see, um, frankly, ever on the English side of things. You know, It's hard to think of any better writers um, of plays. <laughs> Having said that, uh, let's let I'm going to just break down the basic story. So very similar to King Lear, uh, it starts out, there is a king. He's an old, they, I think they use an allegory like he's an old boar. And basically he wants to divide up his kingdom among his three sons. Now in King Lear, it's three daughters. In uh, Ran, it's three sons. Now, that it's in a lot of ways, they handled this part better in my opinion. In uh, King Lear, they divide up the land be, on a stupid question. I'm sorry. I understand it was a plot device, but it was a stupid question. Basically, they asked the daughters, um, how much do you love me? Well, the two, the in they, they end up answering slightly differently, and that's how it divides up the land. But in Ran, in my opinion, better. Of course, Ran meaning revolution, riots, or some stuff like that in Japan. Um, they end up breaking, it, breaking up the territory based on this... On these castles. And he asks uh, his sons to unite like three arrows, basically. And he, he famously, he gets three arrows and he, he's like, you cannot break these three arrows when they're united. Just like you will be united. And I will rule as an overall emperor and uh, I'll spend like six months with each of you. Well, this sounds great to the other two sons because they see this you know, they're like, this is a great idea. There will be no more war. There will be peace eternally. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're totally into it. Of course, the third son, uh, the wayward son, I guess is what we'll end up calling him, uh, disagrees with this. Of course he disagrees with this. Um, he says, you know, he, he breaks the arrows and he says, you know, this is total bullshit. You know, you guys are going to end up fighting because, you know, peace is not maintained by kind words. And uh, he says some such things. And basically he says that this is a, bullshit idea. He calls bullshit on him. Well, um, the other son's kind of, you know, hey, how can you insult our father's intelligence? You know, they eat into him, and he basically gets kicked out of the family's inheritance. So he ends up getting kicked out, and he, he wanders off. Now, he meets up with some guy, and they basically agree that they've got a, they've got a plan. Okay, so they, they've got a plan. Now, uh, the other, th basically what it, they, they, uh, the only thing that really changes is the king takes the smallest castle, the one he started out with, I believe, and the other two sons get the castles that he took from other rivals. And uh, what ends up happening is he spends like, I forget the actual amount of time, it's like six months at uh, one of the son's castles. And what ends up happening is he gets disrespected. It, it's, it's one of those classic, <laughs> classic storylines where it's like, who's going to sit where? Uh, you know, I stuff like that. Now, there's a villain in the story, I guess you should, could call it that, which is one of these sons' wives. Of course, they're going to blame the woman for the thing. Uh, it, this, this is kind of one of those classic storyline twists. Uh, but basically what ends up happening is she, um, she ends up 
telling one of the sons, breeding conspiracy into one of the sons' ears, if you want to put it that way. You know, this always happens in storylines. But uh, what they, they basically kick the father out, and the father leaves one time voluntarily. I think the other one, uh, the, basically, he's not welcomed by either of his sons. Openly, I guess. So he ends up going to his castle, right? And uh, he is angry. He doesn't know what to do. He thought he was going to rule from kind of behind the scenes. He'd be considered the emperor, and the other ones would just rule as kings. And, you know, th to be honest, everybody should have seen this one coming because it, there's always conflict whenever this, you know, a hierarchy is tried to be made. But anyway, don't want to get too much into opinion. But uh, what ends up happening, of course, is um, the sons through uh, fears of a conspiracy by their father, uh, decide to uh, kill him or destroy his force, his garrison. So they come in with uh, full force and they blow the fuck out of his castle. They kill all his men, all his horses, nothing's left. The only people that escape in the end are him, the king, and uh, the joker. Now, uh, I, I, maybe he's a minstrel. I don't know. I, but the point is, is that they're the only two that escape, and this this is very similar to, once again, King Lear. Um, they wander around, they, do, they, they go to places that he's conquered, he kind of asks for forgiveness for his sins, in a sense. Um, or he's, you know, he apologizes, I guess is a better way of putting it. <laughs> and, um, meanwhile, there's more discontent uh, brooding in the uh, kingdom uh, between the sons and among the sons' friends and heirs and the such. Well, um, meanwhile, the third son, the, uh, wayward son, if you want to call him that, um, I like calling him the blue son because this movie brilliantly uses color to dis, you know, each side has a different color. Well, you know, that now, um, he ends up basically building an army and he's on his way back. Well, the, uh, father figure is incredibly depressed, but at the same time, I want to make it clear. It, this is not as depressing as King Lear by any means of imagination. It's a lot more like going and seeing a play with someone depressed um, than seeing someone depressed. And you, you follow? The, it's much more of an artistic rendition of how somebody would feel than an actuality of how somebody would feel if their sons basically killed everybody but them and some asshole who ripped on them the whole time. Uh, I mean, it's literally the worst, it's hard to think of worse circumstance. Anyway, let's get back to the plot. He's wandering around, uh, there's this epic battle between, um, the son that got kicked out and the other two sons, they, they, they're all fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, you know, his, his vision did come to pass. Uh, he ends up winning the military victory. Now, this has been secured, the, uh, the other two sons are fucked. You know, I think they end up getting their heads cut off. I, I forget, but they're basically fucked. Well, uh, the other son, ha you know, um, uh, is, tr you know, the father's looking for the son. He's like, oh, he was right. I should have listened to him. He would treat me right. I should apologize. You know, he's got, he, he's got remorse in a sense. Well, he's wandering around. He's looking for his son, kind of, but not really. And he finds him. And he's like, oh, it's my son. And he gets shot. The son does. Pew, dead. Pew, pew, dead. He gets sniped. And it's one of the most dramatic scenes in the movie. Um, and he, the, the father runs up and he's, he grabs at his dead son. And he's like, oh, he's freaking out. And he suffers some kind of heart attack. And he dies. And the Joker runs up and he's like, don't die, king. And the, the, the one of the commanders in charge of the army that the son brought basically says let him go he suffered enough and that's basically how the movie ends it's a pretty dramatic uh story um in my opinion it is a good way to understand king lear i'll, I'll say that again um though if you're looking for uh, more direct knowledge of what they're trying to get less just the general emotion um, look someplace else, uh, because there's a lot of little differences that occur. Um, but having said that, I think that the movie ran 
captures the ethos more than most renditions that I've seen anyway. All the renditions I've seen of King Lear. Um, having said that, I, I think King Lear is not a bad uh, play. I just think that it's incredibly depressing. And I think the Japanese handle it better. Um, mostly because of the direct language, you know, translation. It doesn't jump through as many hoops, you know, we're not going through thousands of years, we're just going through a language barrier. Which doesn't sound much more easier, but you actually, you just read the text, they say <laughs> what you'd say in, like, English, if this was happening. It's not, like, uh, oh, po poetic. And in a sense, you're losing a real aspect of Shakespeare's writing, uh, but, because, I mean, Shakespeare's writing is so poetic and beautiful that it's one of those things where it's it's so old, though, and it's hard to get through. Eh, it's hard. So if you're, if you're having a hard time getting through there and you just want to understand the emotion, you want to take a shortcut, this is a shortcut. Um, but I definitely recommend either of them. Uh, compare them. There's a couple other movies... Uh, that have similar overlaps, like Fistful of Dollars uh, is very similar to another uh, film from Japan. Um, and there's a couple others that are so similar. I think Fistful of Dollars was actually, if I remember right, like he hasn't admitted it, but he admitted it that it was like a ripoff um, of this Japanese movie. And I'm, I can't pronounce the name, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, but you can look it up. Just Go to Fistful of Dollars on Wikipedia if you're really interested in it. it they'll, have, uh, they'll have it someplace, probably. Um, if you can't find it there, just ask me. Um, what else? I think that's basically it. Um, if I am going camping. If you're worried or wonder uh, where I am in a couple days, I am going on a boat slash camping trip. I will probably be back in two to three days. Um, but yeah, hopefully I come back. I hope I don't drown out there. <laughs> I laugh, but I'm kind of serious about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm also thinking about starting another channel. Uh, don't worry. I know every time somebody says that, what ends up happening is they end up abandoning their old channel. I probably won't start this channel till about two weeks from now if I'm going to do it. Um... But if it does end up being made, it's going to be basically a solely political channel, um, is my goal. And this will be kind of everything else channel. You follow? Because I, I want to keep this politically free, but at the same time, I want to talk about politics on the internets. And this is, that's what I want to do. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, anyway, subscribe, comment, rate. Have a great day. Bye.